than an eating disorder, genetics, or have been criticized for losing too much weight. Hollywood's giant summer slim down. She's even What would happen if I did everything the media suggested I do? Would I look like a celebrity at the end of it? Would my life be as perfect as they say? My name is Maddie Humphreys. I've never dieted before. I've never exercised excessively. I've never dyed my hair or even got a spray tan. But for 10 weeks, I'm going to try it all. Every week, I will test a new diet, exercise regime and beauty treatment. Praised by my favorite celebrities. The hottest Hollywood trends. If they say it, then I'll do it. 1,000 to 1,200 calories a day. Check. The suggested daily intake for weight loss. Three hours exercise every single day. Check. The Victoria's Secret workout regime. And live life glamorously with no cheating. Check. And at the end of all this, stand in front of my friends, family and followers and hopefully present myself as perfect. So, am I perfect? Am I perfect? Hey! How hard could perfect really be? <laughs> I think the next 10 weeks will really be beautiful body, crazy head. I'm going to reduce my overall calorie count by half and only have 500 calories a day. Which I think is ridiculous. I kind of wanted to keep it a secret from her. I don't understand how eating so little and exercising so much and still gain weight. I'm gonna really dedicate myself to a personal trainer. Looks like you need lots of flexibility. You know, on one hand, I feel great. And then on the other hand, I'm just feeling miserable. Every instinct is telling me to stop doing this. But it's my cuckoo head that won't let me. You're gonna end up malnourished. This is extreme to the extreme. Completely overwhelmed by the pursuit of perfection, I had to continue on with the hellish lemon detox diet freeze my ass off in an ice bath and get a complete makeover for the big reveal. But first I had to try another bizarre recommendation to cure my horrific hunger pains. Supposedly that if you smell food, it kind of tricks the body into thinking that you've eaten that food. This is probably the amount of calories I've had in like the last past week. <laughs> One little thing of Rocky Road. Oh, it smells so good. Oh. <laughs> I just, I can't. That actually makes my mouth water and so, oh God. Oh, that's, that was so good. When I get to this point and I'm really hungry, I usually get, put my shoes on and go for a walk. Is that where how even, you deal with yeah, hungry? sometimes, even if I just walk around my street because it reminds me like, oh, exercising, lose weight, don't eat. <laughs> Avoiding food for me works better than putting it right under my nose. Ooh. I'm just so hungry. What I wouldn't give for pancakes or a bread sandwich, you know, a big sandwich with chicken and marinated and mayonnaise and salad and prawns with like a saute dip if i just had a bowl of brown rice nothing else just just the bowl of brown rice i would be so happy <laughs> Apparently, if you swim in really cold water, it speeds up your metabolism. And if just hearing about the ice bath gave you a brain freeze, like it did me, then you won't believe what the celebs are doing. The likes of Demi Lovato are lining up for cryotherapy, a treatment where you stand in a six foot tall machine that blasts your body with sub-zero degree vapors and apparently sheds 800 calories. Yeah, go, go.
and speeds up your metabolism is apparently the cure to everything and it just it's shit <laughs> with the deadline to be perfect only five days away i was a nervous wreck crumbling under the pressure winter but i'm going for a nice early morning swim i've come to realize that on this challenge. I feel like all I'm really doing is is living my life obsessed with with numbers. This is the first time I've really been to the beach in a bikini. I'm obsessed about the number of calories I eat, how many hours of exercise I do, kilograms I lose, just everything. I don't feel like a human being anymore. You know, I, I can go through the motions, I'll walk and I'll talk, but I can't hold good conversation, I can barely think. I literally plan my life around my food and exercise and there's nothing else. I'm a dizzy. Super to be completely honest, this whole 10 weeks I have been gut-wrenchingly terrified of, of failing. Terrified of, of stopping these beauty treatments and people thinking, you know, that the natural me is is ugly. I'm just, I'm terrified of not being good enough. Apparently, Beyonce quotes and states that her beautiful curvy physique and bottom and looks are down to stair walking. And apparently, this repetitive activity will see you burning calories and gaining toned arms and legs in no time. And look, if this fitness trend gets me anywhere closer to the queen bee of booty and all things bootalicious, then I would need to step up my game. I'm going to walk up and down stairs for an hour. <sighs> <laughs> I, just, I just think people are crazy if they actually do this. So, Beyonce is actually crazy if she does this. I feel crazy. We are meant to eat. We are meant to consume solid food. I don't care what anyone says, but you are not meant to do these silly master cleansers. I'm so close to pitching the white flag and just surrendering. Drained and exhausted, I reluctantly dragged myself to my final checkup with Nurse Haley. Meanwhile, unbeknownst to me, the producers went alone to chat to Fiona with concerns. So we've decided to come into you without Maddie, just to have a little talk. Looking great. Have uh, a seat. Thank you. She's done such extreme fad diets over the last 10 weeks. She's well bang into starvation thinking. It feels tired. That's the best way I can describe it. You've seen it firsthand, the transformation from fed state to starved state and how much of an effect that can have on somebody. So 80.4. Numbers focused, hypercritical, very judgmental. Uh, that's 
typical starvation type thinking. Yeah, 33.7 when you first came in. You dropped down to yeah, BMI of 26. You know, because she's not thinking she's good enough unless she's got a particular body shape. And that's not, that's just not. So it's the still in the overweight category? Just mildly. Just mildly. Yeah. The BMI is only ever appropriate to assess populations with. So you're always going to have these outliers. Like Maddie, who's lovely and tall and does have an athletic body shape, she's always going to be probably in the overweight category, even as healthy as possible. Feels like I'm striving for, like, this this healthy mark. Yeah. But um, I just not feel healthy. <laughs> So you go on a little diet and then it gets a bit addictive and very seductive. You know, you can have this sort of body in this many weeks and da-da-da-da-da, you'll be perfect, therefore everything will be fixed. So they get sort of get let off there and then they get more and more starved and more and more entrenched in this belief that body image is so important because everything in our culture just reiterates it. If you, your pulse would drop below that 50 mark, which is it like 56 at the moment, I'd be wanting to do an ECG on you. Oh, okay. To be honest, yeah, I'd be sort of going, oh, my goodness, what are your electrolytes like? Is it affecting your heart? In no time, you're eating disordered and then with a proper eating disorder. If you keep going and stressing the heart, something could happen. People with full-blown eating disorders, you have to treat the starvation element first before you can do any psychological work because there's just, they, they, they really can't think straight on so few calories. You need to stop what you're doing and just go back to a more reasonable lifestyle. Maddie is teetering on actual medical condition now. The first step is some sort of body image issue or a comment made by a family member or friend that's just a bit negative about body image stuff. And then in our culture, the solution to that sort of thing is seen as dieting and, and weight loss. Even though I know it's completely counterproductive to do that, it's widely accepted by everyone in public that the, the fix is diet. I don't know if I'll... If I can truly, honestly say that I'll stop it. I don't know if I'll stop calorie counting. I don't know if I'll stop... Uh, restricting calories or... I don't know if I'll stop... You know, being so strict with exercise. I'd like to think I would, but it just feels like a foreign concept. Because even though I'm proud of how far I've come, I still think there's so, so much further I could keep going. Like this is how far I've come in 10 weeks. If I did another 10 weeks, could you imagine? Maybe then I'd be in the same category as Lara Bingle and Jennifer Hawkins and, you know, all these beautiful, beautiful Australian figures that are so idolised. I'm just so nervous to stand there in front of the people I care so much about and fail them. I don't feel like I'm ready just yet. And I've never felt this anxious in my life before. I really, really don't want to do it. We are off to the hairdressers. My last beauty treatment, the cherry on top of the cake. I was thinking of going blonde. Blonde? Yeah, blonde. Seriously, blonde? <laughs> don't go there, no. No, 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 no don't go there. So we're not trying to make you look like somebody else. We're trying to make you look like you, but really fabulous. I love it. I'm so happy. <laughs> and finally, it had all come down to this moment. Thinner, thinner, tanner, blonder! The weight loss, the fake tan, the new hair, the new outlook, the white teeth, the muscles, the fresh skin, the eyebrows, the little black dress, and thick makeup. Perfect body, skinny, tall, long legs, tall, sorry, long hair, stomach, long, long hair, toned, big mask, big tan. But I was feeling anything but perfect, and my anxieties all came crashing down. 
so nervous. <laughs> I either just go and do it or I have an anxiety attack. <laughs> At least I'm going in knowing that I couldn't have done anything else. I've reached, I've done it all. And that's a good feeling. gentlemen I said those words day one vlog one and boy did I not know what I was getting myself into <laughs> I'm actually sweating it brings back so many memories some good some bad but overall, it was a real eye-opener and something that had a substantial impact on my life and still shapes the decisions I make now. I was so naive and dismissive, thinking that no one could actually go out and spend that much time on their appearance and do all those things. And I thought that if you were a person who did that, then you were kind of vain. Appearances for me isn't really a priority. I've always and still will put a great deal of energy into my family, friends, career and life experiences. I think the first couple of weeks were very liberating. When I first started to fit into my clothes a bit better, I felt more at ease with myself and I realised that I was harbouring some pretty heavy self-esteem issues that really affected my confidence. I also experienced some of the lowest points in my life, attempting everything the media suggests I do. I became more aware how I didn't measure up to the idealistic female body standards, and that maybe for the first time in my life, I wanted to. I've still got a lot of problem areas and lumps and bumps and rolls, you know. I've still got lots of weight to lose. So I went out and I did it. For the first five weeks, I genuinely attempted it all with an open mind to see if there was any chance. I was feeling so proud of myself, but when I stood on those scales and someone said, you know, that you're still categorized as obese, it was like a big label saying you're not good enough. I'm so annoyed that I'm still in the <laughs> obese category. I guess it just makes you feel really shit, really bad about yourself. At that point, I realised the reason I had never spoken openly about my appearance was the fear of hearing those exact words. And that is the danger for any woman to be given such unfair judgement. Whether it is BMI calculations or the media standards, when society tells a woman that there is something wrong with her, we spiral into very dangerous territory. It's an entry point into eating disorders and that's how it happens. The more you obsess, it just feeds normal human anxieties to start with. And then that you can have numbers and the numbers obsess people too. Suddenly I was trying to be everything for someone else. I was living up to other people's expectations. I became obsessive, <laughs> compulsive, selfish, closed off. I stopped speaking to my friends and family. I stopped caring about my studies. I stopped being me. You used to be really enjoyable and now to work with, and now just kind of like, where did she go? I wouldn't want to be my friend at this point. I feel really sloppy and fat, you know, I just feel really disgusted by myself. It's so hard to watch, it's um, it's like I've completely lost sight of, of who I am. Despite my better judgement, I had bought into everything the media and social platforms were selling me. It's most renowned by Beyonce for saying that she did it for 14 days and lost 9 kilograms, so I'm going to do the same. I had become another recruit in the quest for the unachievable. 
look at me present the speech, you know, presenting myself as perfect. I wasn't perfect. Yeah, I had new hair and new tan, new teeth, new eyelashes, new everything, but underneath, I was a mess. Moments before I presented myself as perfect, I was having an anxiety attack. You know, we buy into this image that the media and advertising sell us, but I wasn't happy and I was just covering it up. I realized that I was competing in a race where the finish line would never come and that there is no such thing as perfect. Our culture has grabbed a hold of weight loss being the important thing, when in fact it's the eating well and moving more, that's, yeah. that they're the important factors. That the more something appears to be perfect, the more false it actually is. It's odd when people compliment you or, you know, say, oh, you're, you're looking great, and it's like, well, not really, it's just the makeup. That having the perfect physique meant no longer having any time for my friends and family. That having the perfect tan and makeup meant not having any money to spend on things I truly wanted to experience. That living on meagre meals meant not having the mental capacity to forge a successful career. And that is what ultimately made me stop, as giving up those things is just not who I am. You know, like Fiona kept saying, I did gain most of the weight back and it was, it was hard some days to accept that, but I'm so much more aware and attuned to my body image and my appearance. I learned that it's okay to exercise and eat healthy, visit a spa, get your eyebrows done, or have a tan. As long as these things make you happy, confident, and are true to who you are. I don't regret Am I Perfect at all. I think I learned so much about myself tried to squeeze myself into this box and fit every category and do exactly what they said to do. I did it all and it, it, it didn't work. But I think I've just learned that I have to, I have to just be happy with myself. So, am I perfect? No, no I'm not. My name is Maddie Humphreys. And I'm not Hollywood perfect, but I am happy with who I am.